I'm Ross McGill. Uh, people will know me as Teacher Toolkit online. I'm a deputy head teacher. I've been teaching 23 years. Marking. It, it's the bane of teachers' life. It'll never go away. We'll always need to mark. Uh, it's it's with workload, recruitment, you know, the, the kind of uh, our reputation as teachers, as a profession, it, it's not an easy place to be. Uh, with marking, with curriculum reform and examinations, marking's been made a bit tougher, a bit more rigorous. Uh, but as a school leader, you can come up with a, a marking policy that tries to reduce the workload and expectations of what to mark and what not to mark but you're always in a, a constant battle with you know government reforms because you might say don't mark this but when Ofsted pop in or the DfE reform various specifications you're, you're working against each other in, in many respects so it, it takes a smart school smart person smart teacher to come up with something that works for the kids. Uh, so it, it's interesting times. I don't think we're quite there with a, a solution for anyone yet. And would you say that marking is um, become, the tool that it's set out to originally do is not the tool that it is now? You want, you want marking to, to help this child, full stop. Uh, the danger is you have school policies, uh, book looks, you know, learning walks, Ofsted inspections that all come in and you have all these other people coming in to look at the teacher's book to see if you're doing, what one, what's right or what's expected and then two, to try and work out in whatever book it is, even if it's a PE lesson or a drama lesson or an English teacher's book uh, in, that, in, in that child's classroom, you're looking for the kid to have acted on that feedback. Uh, an example would be in some recent learning walks that we've done in our school, uh, you might go and look at a particular subject and if you're doing it in isolation without the child or without the teacher yeah. to give you the backstory, you, it's, it's I guess like observing a lesson, the, you're, left, you're leaving the observer to make an assumption of what's happened. So, so are we saying that there's more to marking, it's, 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 it's holistic marking compared to just marking a book because if I came in and marked one of your books it would just be a thing of um, okay they've been doing I can see some trill but I don't know the holistic part of that child no you don't you never will because you're only going to get a snapshot of what happens what's in the book is the evidence of what's taking place in the lesson or a bit of homework out of school uh, you might see a bit of dialogue between the teacher and the child yeah. uh, where things go wrong it becomes a bit of triple marking or verbal feedback yeah. stamps where you start to produce records of evidence for a third party to, to look at to almost guide them into say look here I've done it look at me yeah. and that's where marking's going wrong and added to in increased workload on, on the individual teacher. And what would you say are some of the down or pitfalls of marking? What, 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 what are the problems you see with marking? Well, Not just in well, um, two simple school, ones. just in general. Tick, tick, cross, tick, cross all the way throughout the book. I mean, obviously in maths it's pretty straightforward, but you know, if I'm marking an essay, uh, you know, the Battle of Waterloo, and I'm, I'm doing a bit of spell check and tick and cross throughout, there's not much there that's going to help improve the child's performance. Uh, so that's the first downfall. Uh, a second downfall would be I might say, speak to the child and say, oh, the, the first paragraph of your essay is fantastic, you know, do X, Y, Z. Put a verbal feedback stamp in the book to say that I've spoken to the child, but that's just to prove to an observer that I've spoken to you to give you feedback. What's the point of wasting time doing the stamp? Okay. And um, would we say, um, in terms of teachers' well-being, have we got OTT with marking? Yes and no. Uh, Mark, I, I'll go, go back to my main point. Marking is the bane of teachers' life. You'll always have marking to do. You'll always have a pile of marking to take home at the weekend or uh, during your half-term holidays. As we're doing this film now, it's my half-term. Uh, I More and more, obviously, as a senior teacher, I teach much less. I still have a great deal of marking to do. Uh, I try my hardest to keep my marking in school, but if I was a full-time teacher, which the vast majority of people are probably watching this are, uh, you've got a 90% timetable. 
You've got 10% protected time for chasing up behavior, making positive phone calls, going into all different bits of software, recording homeworks and, and different reward points and whatever else. That time to mark is, is minuscule. And, and I've blogged about this many times. Uh, the answer to workload simple. Uh, the government need to fund schools more to allow teachers the freedom to reduce the contact ratio from 90%. Live marking, so marking there and then in the lesson with the child. So, to, you know, it would be dependent on what activities are going on in the lesson. But, you know, aim for two or three children at your at your side by your desk, marking, give an instant feedback, and, and next lesson choose another another two, two or three. You might want to target specific groups of students. Uh, you might want to target uh, one or two students that have been absent, so they can kind of get back up to speed. Uh, so I find live marking works really well. It kind of reduces the marking that you need to do outside of the classroom in your own time. Uh, one that I've been doing, uh, using for the last year or so is the yellow box. And for me, uh, it works twofold. One, it reduces the marking need. Uh, and two, it makes it very obvious where the marking will take place. So if you're not familiar with yellow box, you might have an essay. I might just highlight the middle section of your essay. And I'm going to spell check that. And I'm going to check the content, uh, the facts, the, the for and against arguments, and ask the child to redraft that only. I've totally ignored the beginning and the end of the essay because I just want to focus on this as an area for development. I want to reduce my marking uh, quantity, uh, and I want to focus the child on a specific area only so that it, I ensure that they act on that feedback. Uh, you can then add another empty yellow box and you can expand the size of the box depending on how much you want the child to act on that feedback. Uh, so there's a couple. Uh, a third one, uh, get the kids to work for you. Uh, try and design any activity in the lesson where you can involve the students doing some peer or self-assessment. That, that takes all the work away from you. Uh, and those can, if you can get some regular habits going on in a lesson, that can significantly reduce your workload. And, and again, although I teach much less, uh, I have decreased my own marking because of one, the yellow box, and two, I design a lot of the learning activities in my lesson where students will self and peer assess what they are doing, so it requires less input from me.